You've been burning the midnight oil and working really late. All you really want to do is come home and have a nice tall glass of wine. Now interestingly enough, I've been trying to teach myself a little bit more about wine. But when I did some research, I found that there's so many different types of wine. And there's so many enthusiasts out there that are absolutely serious about this kind of stuff. There's an actual website called Wine Enthusiasts where people will go and give points to different bottles of wine based on price point and a whole bunch of other things. But that got me thinking and I wanted to know what the relationship was between price and these points that people are giving. And doing some back of the napkin high level statistics, it shows me that the two are really statistically insignificant. Now speaking of price, just for fun, I was curious to see what the most expensive bottle of wine is, which apparently costs $500,000. And naturally, my reaction would be... Now, I'm not a wine connoisseur or anything, nor can I look as cool as this guy. But I do sometimes ask myself why people get so upset, and I mean upset, over a negative wine experience. And so that led me searching again, and I finally found this data set on Kaggle. And this data set talks about wine quality, more specifically this is red wine we're talking about. And then you have all these features that would help determine wine quality. Now quality in this case is going to be subjective, but let's just go with the fact that we could potentially build a machine learning model that could look at all these different types of features from acidity to chlorides to pH level to actually determine quality with the notion that a higher quality, the more likelihood that somebody's going to enjoy this wine. Now there is no price point attached to this, but one can theoretically say that if the quality is slightly lower, if the ingredients cost is slightly lower, that it may be a cheaper wine. Again, I'm not a wine connoisseur, I don't know. But what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna use TensorFlow and we're gonna go ahead and analyze all of this great information. Now in today's video, I specifically wanna use TensorFlow because I got a question from one of my viewers who asked, how do I build a neural network in the form of a regression model? So that's what we're gonna do today. So I've already built this model out. I'm gonna put this notebook on GitHub. You guys can go ahead and play with it. But essentially what I've done is I've imported that data set. I've done some high level cleaning to make sure that there's no null values. And then I did some statistics against it. This right now isn't important, it will be later on. I went ahead and then created a train and test data split with quality being my Y value and everything else being the features. I have my input layer and my output layer and I put three hidden layers in between. Now, the amount of neurons that I put in were completely random at this point. So there was no science behind it per se. I'm also gonna say this isn't a fully optimized model yet either. For the optimizer, instead of using RMS prop, I chose Atom, and I'm looking at the mean absolute error and mean squared error. Now I trained this model on about a thousand epics, and I did some graphical analysis against it as well. And then finally I said, all right, if I have my predicted value versus my true values, how does this stack up? And you'll see most of the predicted values cluster around between just under four to about eight. So I never really get those lower values or higher values. And then finally I went down and I did a plot on the actual error rate. And you see that most of it is still clustered around between zero and around minus 0.125 or so to about 0.5. But the most important thing is when I actually did the prediction against this model, it actually gave me a mean absolute error of around 0.5. So what that means is that for every metric that I had, I was on average off by around 0.5, which actually isn't too bad. What it does is it takes the average of all of the different differences between the predicted and the actual, and it'll average the absolute value out, and which gives me 0.5. So again, this model probably can use a little bit more fine tuning, but for the sake of doing a demonstration, it's not bad. And then finally, I went ahead and did some predictions. And I said, if I actually created my own data set here, just a random number, and these, are, these represent the features, what does my score look like? So technically speaking, I can go ahead and grab my Excel spreadsheet here, and we can do some predictions against it. So I've already gone ahead and prepared a couple of random samples. And all I'm doing is I'm hiding this because this allows me to just copy and paste everything at once, doing right now. So if I scroll down here, I go all the way down this data set that I randomly generated, these three. So all I do is I copy and paste, and these are gonna be representative of all the features that I had. And I can go back into my model, 
and we can go ahead and replace this and see what it's going to shoot out. So that was in fact the first one which is 7.48. And if I go back to the second one and do the same thing, again random numbers picked, and if I go ahead and just pop it into my model here, it'll say that this is going to give me roughly a 6.74 quality rating. And then finally, if I take something else like this and pop it into here, this will give me around a 6.12. So again, clustered around that 4 to 8 mark, but I probably just picked values that were fairly low. But if we just go ahead and take a look at one of the sample data sets, so let's just scroll up and let's assume that it's something like this. So let's just pick this one. I'm hoping it's going to give me a score somewhere around 3. Let's give this a shot. So 3.68. So again, not too bad of a model, but this is how you use TensorFlow to go ahead and build your own prediction model. So what you can do with this is you can always put this on a website. You can ask people questions like, hey, you know, you're probably not going to ask them about pH levels, but you can always have leading questions that sort of have these as backend answers. So what I mean by that is you can ask them if they have, if they like more sweet wines or if they like more bitter wines. And based on that, you can say that if it's a sweet wine, you can say that the sugar levels are going to be, you know, between... 2.2 and 4.5 if this was on a scale of 5. So, But at the end of the day, again, this was just a demonstration to show you how to use a neural network with a regression model. So this is how you do it. So if you guys like this, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.